Hi, so I am back. So I just want to just give a quick word of encouragement. Um, this is something that the Holy Spirit spoke to me a few days ago, and I want to release this message on YouTube to give a word of encouragement for anybody who is waiting on God, who is going through struggles, testing, trials, tribulations, um, who's waiting on God for anything, whether it's breakthrough, finances, uh, marriage, whatever it is. I want to just start with this scripture. It's 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, and this is what the Holy Spirit led me to. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, So let's define faith and sight, okay? Faith is the evidence of things that we cannot see, okay? When we have faith in God, we know God is real. We know that Jesus is real, but we can't see him. We can't see God, but we know he's real. How do we know he's real? We have we evidence through his word, right? It's not, we're not led by our senses when it comes to our faith in God, right? This is why you hear so many people say, like, don't lean on your feelings when it comes to making decisions, right? Because when you're leaning on your senses and your feelings and all these things, you're going to be led astray because the heart is wicked. The heart is not wise, okay? Like wisdom and godly wisdom is what I mean, comes from the Lord. So when you have faith, right, you're trusting in God. Faith and trust are intertwined, okay? Even though you can't see it, you know it's going to happen. You know it's real and you know that it will be, okay? Sight, okay? We walk by faith. Remember that we're walking by faith, but not by sight. So sight is going by your senses. You could see it. You could taste it. You can smell it, okay? You're leaning on your own understanding because you can see it, okay? It is so important to know the difference between the two. When we are leaning on our faith, we're trusting in God's provision. We're trusting in his salvation. We're trusting in all things regarding the Lord. When we are leaning on ourselves, which is our senses, the physical flesh, let's talk about the Israelites, okay? They were led by the Lord into the wilderness, but then they lost faith. They lost their trust in God, even though God literally was showing them signs and miracles and wonders. They decided to run and make false gods with their own hands so that they can worship. They were able to see the false god. This is what happens to a lot of people who worship false gods. Because they can see it, they can touch the statue, they can feel it, they can smell it, right? They're walking by their sight. They're walking by their own understanding. They're walking by the eyes because they can see it, right? And because they're walking by that, they lack faith. They're instantly put out and they instantly don't believe in God anymore. They instantly say, okay, you know, yeah, God might have said this about my life, but I can see it. For an example, right? The Lord might be putting you in a waiting season for marriage, okay? I, I like to give this example. If the Lord is putting you in a waiting season for marriage, maybe he already told you who your husband or your wife is, right? You're on that waiting season. You're waiting in faith. You can't see it. But you know it's real. You know that God's word is real. His promises and all the things that he says will never return back to him void. So you know by faith it will happen. Faith is the evidence of things we cannot see. Hebrews 11. But now the enemy sends you a counterfeit. Okay. The enemy sends you somebody that was not aligned for you. It is not the person that the Lord's telling you to wait for. Whether you know him or her or not. Right. It is somebody that fits that mold though. And now you're getting to the point on your walk and in your waiting season that you just want to do whatever because you're tired, right? And a lot of people end up doing that. You feel like you're tired or you feel like this person's the right person or you feel like this friend. It might, even, it might not even be a relationship. It could be a friend, right? You feel, remember the feeling, the sight, you could see it. It's in right in front of you. It's easy. It's right there. Might as well just do it. You lean on your own understanding, right and maybe you even get dreams about that person you're like well it's, he's already here or she's already here i already had a dream about them this is the right person and then you don't go back to god and ask okay this now leads to doubt and we know that faith pleases god in hebrews eleven six, let's just read it really quickly when you go now into this doubting of what the lord says just like the Israelites started doubting and they started questioning God in a way of like well god why did you take us out of egypt we might as well just been back to egypt which was their bondage Okay, so I just want to read Hebrews. And if you struggle with faith, I really highly recommend reading Hebrews 11 and bring all of this back to God. Okay, so now here in Hebrews 11, and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, it says faith shows the reality of what we've hoped for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. That's Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now Hebrews 11.6 says, 
Okay. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who seek him sincerely. Okay. Who sincerely seek him, right? He is pleased by our faith and without faith, you cannot please God. So that's important. We need to lean on our faith, not lean on our own understanding. So when we go back to the scripture, we walk by faith, not by sight. It's because we're truly trusting that God is going to do what he said that he's going to do in your life. God will do it. But do not be led astray by what you can physically see. Don't be led astray by your feelings, by your emotions, by your own understanding. Right? Don't be led astray from the tactics of the enemy when he tries to send in false jobs, false opportunities, false marriages, okay, false things to throw you off of where God is calling you to be, okay? Maybe you feel like God's making, is calling you to move to a particular place, but now you have a thought of like, well, I'm already here. I'm already home. Might as well just stay here. Or maybe I'll just move to the next state because there's a better job opportunity out there and it's easier. I can just know what's happening, right? When people just lean so much in their own understanding that they don't just say, you know what, God, I'll just do what you're calling me to do. I have no idea what you're going to do, but I'm going to just do it and trust that you know what you're doing. That's faith. That is taking a leap of faith by saying, you know what, God, you've told me this about this person. I'm living in your hands. I will pray for them, but I just want to focus my relationship on you, right? Because we need to seek the Lord diligently. We need to seek him sincerely. We should not be focusing on the things that God has promised us. Yes, they're important. You need to focus on the kingdom of God, right? Matthew 6, 33, seek the kingdom of God first. And that means understanding faith. And how do we increase our faith? Through the word of God. Why? Again, the word of God is living proof of God's existence, of God's word. Okay, we know it's a book of instructions. The word of God is powerful. And this is why it's so important to make sure that you are reading the Bible every single day. Do not lean on your senses. And I'm just looking down at my notes. Trust in his word alone. Trust in God's word alone. Don't trust your feelings. Don't trust your flesh. Right? Don't trust your feelings. Don't trust your flesh. Trust in God's word alone. Trust in his provision. Trust in all things regarding the kingdom. Trust in God. And he will show himself to you in due time. And I'm going to end this with Galatians 6, 9. For those who are, are weary, those who are just so tired, they feel like they want to give up. They feel like they've been waiting forever for something that God has called on their life. Okay, this, Meditate on this scripture, Galatians 6, 9. It says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So God has promised. That's a promise right there, right? Don't get tired of, what's do, of what is good. What is good? Seeking the kingdom of God is good. Living a righteous life is good, right? Obeying the Lord and loving God and others is good. Don't get tired of doing those things. Don't get tired of trying to seek God. Don't get tired of reading your Bible and praise and worship and all these things that we need to do at just the right time. Okay. There's a season for everything. Ecclesiastes says there's a time and a season for everything. So that's why here it says at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. If we don't give up so many people give up. So many people say I'm tired. God, so many people say, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. I, I just take it away. I'm tired, right? Don't be that person. When you get to that point, that's when you need to go to your prayer closet. That's when you need to pick up your Bible. That's when you need to tell it to God himself. Let him encourage you. Let him comfort you. Let him tell you exactly what needs to be heard in those moments because he knows how you feel. He knows exactly the emotions you're going through. But we need to have faith and we need to trust. And we need to know that God knows what he's doing. And walk by that faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. I really hope that this helps somebody. I really pray that this reaches the right person, whoever this is for. And until next time, I'll see you guys soon.